So I'll go introduce you then. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. Crew, I don't know, crew chief at, at Daffabet Racing. I think that's probably the easiest way, isn't it? The door and, he goes, and it landed on all four wheels and I just drove away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ain't got like that, I've got to. Right. Need to in locker for that. We'll have to think of something for that, won't we? You're going to have to give us some stories of ones that you can tell. Yeah. There's always going to be stories you can't tell. Yeah, there's not, not too many, really. What was the one that Southern 100 when we were, we were late for boat and we were in back at van and Guy were driving, I think it was me and Johnny in back at van and Cammy. He's doing like 100 mile an hour from Southern 100 to boat at uh, Steam Packet. I we had, fuck, I like, bloody hell, you're going a bit, you know, you're tramming on a bit here, mate, in back, bouncing around. <laughs> And then, woo, like, oh, you absolutely joke. Were you racing to get to the boat? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You were getting late. missed we're your sailing? Yeah, we're always late. And, um, yeah, knock on with it, like, can I see that? He's, like, talking, you out, copper. All oh, right, yeah, you're going a bit fast there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you passed me, must have been, like, 100 mile an hour, 90 mile an hour. <laughs> um, right, I'm in the rush for about, right. Oh, if you sign this for me, then you'll go. Copper, like, yeah, happy days. Signed it. Didn't even look it back at Van. We were all like tight lipped it back at Van. Signed it and off we go. So it does prove to be famous sometimes, doesn't it? It's better. Yeah. For Guy Martin. So you know, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, yeah. yeah. I think you um I once got smuggled into a circuit, thanks to you guys, when we had a dodgy security guard on the gate. Right. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention the circuit because I'll probably need to do it again one day. But yeah. Yeah, it always um, happens a little baseball cap or a Do you know what the annoying thing was I had a ticket? But they didn't know which gate it was at, and right. they wouldn't. They were, I think it was at the top gate, and we were at the bottom gate, and they wouldn't let me in without the ticket. Right, just getting back at the van. Yeah, easy. That's what. Yeah, you you <laughs> lot rock, rocked up and went. Yeah, right, Phil. Yeah, you <laughs> you got to be confident. That's the thing. You got to be when you're on. The, um, yeah, when you try to get in somewhere free, you just got to yeah. be like, all right, mate. Yeah, yeah. Sound house, you know, house family and all that lot. Mm. And they just look at you blank and then. Yeah, it used to be like, when you used to travel down Spain, a, a poster would do. You know, you'd give like customs a poster and they'd just, they'd just let, you through. let you through. And now it's, you know, you've got a mm. open park or something, they want a t-shirt, they want an hoodie, they want a cap, they want everything, ride on bike. Oh yeah, get the Archie t -shirt. Product placement. <laughs> got to do, haven't you? This is the worst bit. What? The initial I'm like... Waiting for getting going. <laughs> ah, it's <laughs> chat. So... <laughs> We're here at the Daffabet RC Express Racing headquarters. Not quite headquarters. Mm, workshop. Workshop, yeah. Workshop. Headquarters are down in uh, Avonmouth. Yeah. In Bristol, where they all talk a bit funny. Um, so this is, needs no introduction, Danny Horn, who is a film star stroke. <laughs> um, like, I don't know what you'd say. You're on par with like, was it Sprocket used to be the Ducati mechanic that ever that used to have like a, used to have a section in the magazine. Oh, for Foggy's know. mechanic. Oh, I don't know. I've never been. Oh, uh, Slick Bass. No. S was it Slick? Slick. Slick. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on his level. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. On his level. He, he actually knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. He had a column. You I've need never a had column. A column have I? <laughs> <laughs> been in a few columns in Keithley News a few times in. Uh, Arrests and stuff like that. Yeah. I am. I Mugshot. Am. No, I am actually. <laughs> yeah, Slick Bass is different level. He's a clever lad, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you met him? him? Yeah, he's he's still like about paddock and stuff like that. Is he? Yeah, I met him in. Um, I think first time properly meeting him, we're out in Macau. We right. were working for Dan Neen. Um Yeah, and he's uh, he's, he's a boy. If he's uh, <laughs> if his mechanic is as good as he's drinking. <laughs> he's uh, no wonder he has a column in a, a magazine. But yeah, no, he's, I'm not on a par with him. He's, he's a clever lad. I always think from a, someone who's working in a team, like mechanic in or, or running a team, you almost get the full story compared with what a racer will get. Because the racers are so focused on what they've got to do 
they don't always see the bigger picture yeah. of the whole Focus on the self you mean <laughs> <laughs> the whole paddock the sponsors the politics yeah i think you get a, a better sense of all that yeah and i'm i'm in a little probably a little bit more different uh sort of area than others where you should have like a specific mechanic or you have a specific team manager or mm. or social media or whatever and and um you know i try and do it all you know whether yeah, it's yeah. right or wrongly I, I try and do it all um because we are such a small team we put on a big sort of presence and things but yes i do see it all from the sponsorship side of it to rider choice and you know down to building the bikes and yeah. getting the bikes to and from races and and you know everything really um you know ben ben works hard at it and roy works hard at it as well uh, but yeah as, as like in the the thick of it all it's yeah it's a bit of a, a strange predicament to be in really because you you've got this to do and then you've got to go do something with the uh, sponsors at the tv yeah, yeah. or they'll bring vips in you got to chat yeah you know rubbish to them for 10 minutes or whatever so yeah every aspect of it really whereas a rider just concentrates on i've got to say out of all the teams at the tt you always seem to be the one who's always willing to because i i think when there was the um the playstation game launch yeah you were the team who had it actually in for people to come around and try out and yeah we, we try and you know like i said we're, we're not on a, a a par with the you know what we call the top row teams the budgets yeah, yeah. of them but we always seem to hold the zone when we're up there and whether it's the tt game that came out you know can we put a playstation and we had it playing and stuff like that or um if it's raining one day and the vips at the walking round and want to come in and just you know yeah. the, you know the the organizers you waste. yeah they yeah. need to waste like an hour with them or something yeah or we've done it way past where we've taken a bike on stage for vips and done a pit stop and yeah and yeah. things like that and you know, we have to. We don't have the big name riders and and the big pull of what and you know they don't need to do it because they're getting masses of money and stuff. But for us to do our job and and what have you, we we have to go that extra mile. And yeah. you know, I think the TT, I think um, acknowledge it, um, and you know our sponsors, Daffabet, definitely acknowledge it. You know, we're going. We've just done a, a two year deal with them, which will take us into uh, twenty four, and I think that'll be his eighth year with them. So, and it, you know, it's not unheard of, but for a team like us to keep a big sponsor like yeah, that yeah. is... Um, it shows that the relationship's working and yeah. there's a loyalty there. Yeah. And that's when you get the best results, obviously, out of everyone involved in the team and the bikes. And yeah, everything. well, it gives you that bit of continuity, doesn't it? And, mm. you know, we can now start... We've never been in a position where we've had... Um, we're knowing we've got the funds for a year ahead. We've always worked year to year, and like a lot of teams do, I'm not just saying it's us, but um, we can now start talking to riders and things like that for 24. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually plan. Because you know. you've already know you've got that sponsor yeah. in place. So. Yeah, and we go into Macau thinking, yeah. right, we're not, we'll always do a good job because we, that's just how we work. We'll try and do as best for the sponsors, but we're not thinking, oh, God, if we make a cock up here or we have a bad result or whatever, it's going to you know, jeopardise yeah. our a chance of a budget for next year so mm -hmm. we're in a really good place at the moment and you know hopefully a, a rider signings around the corner and you know we you were just um yeah a bit more relaxed for so once. there's going to be a new rider for 2023 yeah, yeah um we're in talks with two or three riders at the moment um the ethos of the team from the start has always been give the the rider and family sort of rider yeah, a chance yeah. like we did with Dean yeah uh, originally I wasn't with the team just at the very first start of it but they they bought him a bike and got him going and, and helped him along and you know we knew when I got with the team this in the second year of it um we knew Dean had move on that was you know that's yeah that's a tick on our that you know tick the on fact that he thing. found his pace with you yeah to then move on TT, to yeah you know won his ulsters and i remember that like as well that. i remember that first win you know it you. was i were at one well, actually there we well, yeah. had worked the whole tt like done everything i think we got a second on super stock as well yeah and um yeah my mate was getting married and then like <laughs> ages before i'd even signed the team this was all sorted and yeah yeah i, yeah. I came back and it was like listen to a little earpiece <laughs> while i'm sat at top table like, one of those yeah, where if anyone yeah. wants to say anything, <laughs> yeah. you're like, yeah, but, but my mate and that, they all knew, they're like, yeah, yeah, no worries. Like, How's he doing? How's he doing? And, and yeah, he won. And 
and went on to great things. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's he's doing unbelievable now and still keeps in touch with team. We still go for a brew and that. And he jumped back on the bike, the RC Express bike for Scarborough last year. Yeah, well, the goal. It, yeah, it was the Gold Cup. I think two years ago, it was in. Was it the start? Or three years ago, the start lockdown. I can't remember what it was. Mm. And yeah, went to the Gold Cup on our. 600 yeah was he on yeah he was on our he's 600, on the 600 and the super twin yeah um, and yeah won some races for us there and he's a class act you know yeah. we, we'd love to get him on our super twin for the TT if we could um, you know. he, re- he reminded me of Guy Martin when he was on the AIM Yamaha was it yeah when you just knew that you stick him out on the grid at that race yeah. and he's just going to gap everyone yeah. oh yeah he's um, you know he, he knows Sky back at back yeah. his hand and he knows Southern 100 like he's he's such a good rider. I think he's so he's he's not um he's not um bypassed by anyone, you know, the commentators and that, but mm-hmm. I think because of how he is, you know, he doesn't blow smoke up anyone's ass or all like no, that. Yeah. He's he's just himself. He's a lad from Bradford who's he's just himself and does an amazing job. And yeah. Because he don't just enjoys riding ass like everyone and stuff, yeah. he probably don't get the uh I don't think he gets the uh accolades he's mm. he's due, really. He doesn't play up to it, does he? No, you know, you get these riders that, like, they'll see who's in spotlight for that moment in time and they'll jump on their bandwagon or yeah, yeah. there'll be something at media and they'll, they'll mm. jump on that and, and you know, ding done. He just <laughs> just goes for a pint in idle with his mates and, and that's what he does. He goes mountain biking with him and just yeah. a good lad. You know, you go to, if we drove over to the workshop now, his, his engineering place, he'd be there working, you know, covered in crap with his brother yeah, yeah. and that is you know he's I, I dropped him a helmet off it where he was working because he was working the winter or something at an MOT station and he was like dropped him his like his first lid off for the season yeah and he's there like on this dodgy old scooter moped thing that he was fixing up so he could get home on it <laughs> after doing a day's work MOT in yeah. cars or whatever he was doing yeah it's uh, no it's uh, he's a good lad he's a good lad and it's a privilege to work with him really yeah so uh, out of all the riders you work, I mean, come on, you're gonna have to list them probably now. <laughs> so who have you worked with over the years? Uh, started with Robin Appleyard because that's how it all started really at Colin Appleyards in Keithley. Yeah. Uh, my apprenticeship there, and Robin was still riding his last year in one two fives. Then we moved on to Darren Barton, won the British Championship with him as his mechanic, riding for Help I Honda, which was under Colin Appleyards. My brother's RS two fifty was. One of Darren Barton's old bikes, really, from Colin Appleyard. Oh, was it yeah. the um, ninety nine or two thousand? Yeah, was it the Mark swing one? Arm? Did it have MARC on it, or was it the Hellfire one? Not sure actually, because we had shared. I know he had well. he had a set of bavel, spare bavels that came with it, right? That were like fully tuned up. Yeah, ones yeah, that, yeah. Well, it was it. Jeff Norval used to tune them. He were yeah. he were a proper boy, Shane's dad. Um, yeah, so we've we worked with him. Uh, Shane Naval, I worked with him in that was my first year on four strokes actually with uh, Quelsh Motorsport, uh, Mark Quelsh. There were Shane Naval and Hilton Hinks. Mm. Um, and then a lad called Kenny Robinson from Ireland. Um, he worked one two fives. Mick Michael Moody, Jim Moody's lad, on yeah. one two fives again. Johnny Ray on his first year on a road racing from Motocross yeah. on Red Bull Rookies. One two five. That was two thousand and three, two thousand four. Shane Naval back with Johnny on his first year on a superbike at Honda uh, in two thousand five. Then Conor O'Brien from Southern Ireland, two thousand six and seven was with Martin Finnegan. Yeah, legend. Um, <laughs> God bless him. Um, and then I went to work with Cameron Donald at TAS. Right. Um, and Michael Laverty. <sighs> what are we into now? 2009. <laughs> uh, t- end of 2008, I went work in World Supersport with Miguel Pryor. Uh, then 2009 was started with Guy. I did five years with Guy. Yeah. Uh, and Taylor McKenzie in and amongst that. Victor Cox in and amongst that as well. Have I missed anyone? Where are you up to now? 2004? Th- no, 30, 30, no, 2004. 13 with my last 13. year with Guy Sorry, yeah. and then I did Macau with RC Express because they'd never been Dean mm. had never been and I'd been the year before with Dave Johnson at Split Lath I'd done that yeah. <laughs> um, Josh Brooks at Milwaukee um, and then yeah started with them and we had Dean for one year was it yeah one year then we got Ivan Alan Bonner 
Steve Mercer, Paul Jordan, Dom Herbertson, Jamie Coward, Rob Hudson. And then the next. Then the next. Whoever that I hope I haven't missed one out, anyone out there. You have to follow the, the, <laughs> all the social media pages to yeah. find out who yeah. it is when, it, when it's announced. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you work with John, Johnny Ray, could you see then, even at that early stage when he first started road racing, the talent that he had? Or Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to claim that I spotted him. It was Robin who spotted him and did all the thing with him. But yeah, even working with him, uh, even on a 125, you were a big lad back mm. then for a 125. Yeah. Um, he looks trim now on a super bike, but he, he actually looked big on a 125. And coming just from motocross to jump on that, it was just... He were up there, you know. He, yeah, he yeah. wasn't winning races, but he were up there, and he were he were progressing every week and yeah. and stuff like that. And then he did really well. He started really well on the Super Sport, I think, didn't he? At Honda, and had a big crash at Knock Hill, where yeah. he had a really serious incident, and then got back on the Superbike. And I think it was um, it was Mondello Park where he, he really shone. Yeah, I think he qualified. Bit of a home track type thing. Yeah, and I, I don't know if he qualified on pole or he were up there. Um, and Rutter pushed him off at turn one. Um, he ran on the other side at garage with the HM plant team, and he yeah. pushed. He, I, I don't know if Johnny might have just tried too much or whatever, but I think uh, Rutter was like, "No, this is my line." And uh, yeah, you could tell then it was it was something special. That's quite a big big name to work with that early on. In fact, a lot of the names you've worked with. Is there any that stand out as like the most enjoyable of the riders to work with? Uh, definitely Finnegan. Finnegan. Yeah, uh, we we'd really clicked. I, I remember I was working at Silverstone, and it was Barry Simmons who actually got me. Uh, well, Colin Appleyard. Barry Simmons had asked Colin Appleyard, "Do you know anyone who's would do a job?" And he says, "Oh, Danny's just set up on his own because um, I just started my own business." Then he said, "He'll, you know, he'd be up for a day yeah. rate sort of thing." Uh, so Finnegan at Silverstone asked me to go. Um, oh, I've worked for Eugene Laverty as well. Yeah, <laughs> 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 one ad. <laughs> Um, that were only a couple of rounds out in Spain that was um, and yeah I had a meeting in his motor home and he says right day rate for TT I'm running a 600 he says I probably won't do that many laps on it because you're a big old boy uh, just come over for crap yeah. so went and worked with him and then it was like we just yeah ended up going to his wedding and, and stuff like that and like got a real still keep in contact with like I go to Celtic matches with one of his sponsors and yeah. stuff like that and have a, a you know a beer with them and yeah still keep in contact with them all and yeah just a great family a great team around him and just a nice lad you know just he'd always pay for your food and yeah take you out and yeah appreciates all yeah, the time and, you put you know, into the bag he was gutted when he like he went to jmf um at the end of 2007 and they had their own team which is fair enough they didn't want us boys going which it happens um but it were gutted, you know, and it'd have yeah. been, you know, it, you know, that's where it unfortunately got uh, killed there. But, you know, it's uh, he, it's ju just a good lad, yeah, really. Yeah, lad. yeah. So, oh yeah, it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still recording. Let's put a log on fire. Keeps my dad busy. Does this keeping to fire it? <laughs> chopping wood. Chopping wood, yeah. <laughs> Get all pallets from round to industrial estate. Prices of electric now we can't have eaters going, can you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the point. We haven't put all these LEDs on. Oh, jeez. What? Oh, it's going to cost a fortune. There we go. That'd be a bit lighter now. Yeah. Um, so then, one of the, the things you're most known for is the um, close to the edge. Um, Did I, that change anything for you? or Not not for me, it didn't, but um, it certainly changed things for Guy, didn't it? But... Um, yeah, I, I sort of made it a lot of, a lot of stuff about it because I was you know I was I was running my own business and yeah. to be in chance of being in a film and getting your van in the background yeah, of it, which I did publicity in every shot they were yeah. like oh your your van's in back oh, <laughs> um, yeah I was like you know a few of them were like oh we're not getting involved with this and we're not doing this and yeah, yeah. like mate when when are you going to get the chance to be in a, a 3D, you know, 3D had just come out. Yeah. And when are you going to get the chance to see And how yourself? often they, they hadn't really done that many, or not that frequently, that they'd do a, a feature-length film about no. the TT. No, no, you know, I think they'd, they'd done them before, but um, I, I think, think it was like Joey with a massive... 70s, yeah, like, yeah, it's... Uh, camera tapes on or something. Yeah. And like, we used one of the... 
think we used one of the three D cameras out of Avatar that they used in Avatar, and it was like yeah. just surreal to be involved with it. We went back over to Isle of Man in um, I think it was October or November time, mm. and if you look on one of the scenes where it's going over the mountain, there's like snow at the side of the road, and they they sort of cut it in as if it's during the race, and yeah. there's actually snow. And, like the, we were. You were actually on set. There was like a butty van on set, and there was yeah, like yeah. the clapper bars. Proper film. It was like crew. You, yeah, and you got paid. You know, you were getting just paid like this. As, a, as an actor, just like this. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine they use this camera here yeah, on course. Avatar. <laughs> yeah. There's multiple people behind the camera oh, there yeah, working yeah, the, the audio, yeah, the lights. Yeah, yeah. That I've just that's who we keep talking to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the crew here is unbelievable. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, just. I just jumped at the chance and, you know, went to film premieres and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and just like, make um, most of it. I can't, remember, I can't remember his name now, the guy that was um, sort of the audio behind it, the singer mm. from, what was he called now? Jared Leto. Right. Jared Leto, I think it was called. Um, you know, and he, he's, I, I, I just jumped on it, mate, I loved it. Went to see it about so 20 times. So what was his involvement in it, John? He, he was the narrator, sorry. That's what oh, right, He was okay. the narrator, and, and one of his songs was in it. Um, oh, what band is he from? Could have been, yeah. Could have been. <laughs> oh, no. 30 Seconds to Mars. All right, okay. That's who he was, uh, yeah. That had a bug me, that. So that then changed, because obviously you, you, the, your business got a load of exposure through the film. So that then led on to... Yeah, I got a, a I lot got of a, other requests and people asking for you to work. Yeah, I did, did a few like more sort of bikes in my workshop, which was just my garage at home. I never, yeah. never had any fancy premises or anything like that. Before this empire. Before this, yeah. The, the, came about. The, uh, the, the uh, what's it called? Air Raid Shelter. I was going to keep it the uh, the location very secret as oh, to where you are. Yeah, don't put that. We on don't that. want people knowing where you are. No, I'll cut that off. Then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it it um, yeah got a bit more business out of it and things like that, and um, certainly got um, you know a little bit more known around the paddock mm. and and things. But it it kind of it was a little probably a, a little baptism of fire because you had to then sort of live up to that in, yeah. in the paddock as well you know yeah. you, you guys sort of put you on this pedestal and you yeah. know even wrote nice things in his book and and things about me and stuff and you kind of then had to to live up to that because mm. you know it's uh you you've put yourself out there but that that's how we worked anyway so yeah. it wasn't a problem um and then obviously guy got that busy with the the tv and stuff and and what have you i could see he was sort of moving away from bikes from the bikes yeah. um and and the fun had gone out of it because after the film it kind of brought a different um per, you know a different spectator to the to the race meetings yeah. and they were they weren't bothered about the bikes they were just they wanted, bo- to, they wanted to see guy martin yeah. and get his autograph and he couldn't hang around it were in the awning with us yeah, yeah. you know it was min that he used to like you know, he'd be just sat around having a brew with us and y- you know what you see on tv of him talking all the time and all that lot he just chilled out. He was like sound and he'd help on bikes or, you know, yeah. um, and he'd take us out for dinner and things like that. And we all used to stay in the same house and travel around in his vans. And it, it unfortunately, that just got, he couldn't do it anymore. Because, mm. you know, there were, there, there were that many people at the TC, they were bending the awning, like leaning on, trying leaning to get in, to him. To and him. it's like, you know, it's, uh, yeah, spoil that. Really. There is a scene in the film where you're all, it just, I don't know what it is, but it's something that you can relate to. Is where ev- low, like uh, everyone in the team, including Guy, was all just sat around the bike in silence because you're all trying to figure out something. I th- it might have been to do with the swing arm, it or was, yeah, it was. I remember. And yeah. everyone's just sat there like, yeah. I think that's the only. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the only one word I say in the thing. He, said, he asked me something about it, and I just go, yeah. <laughs> and that's all I say in the film. <laughs> one line. Uh, yeah, one line. That's all I needed. Uh, but yeah, we were, uh, there was a, the swing arm where the bike had been built was absolutely terrible, you know, right. and, and I did, the, I do the rear wheel, the rear wheel change at the pit stop. Mm. And I was like, we can't use it. It's, yeah. it is not usable. It's going to fail at the, the moment yeah. when you need it to yeah. work. Um, and like 2009, we'd already, we had the problem where the chain snapped mm. and, you know, I, I was like, 
I remember I broke my foot doing that. But right. he did the wheel exit perfect, got him off and he he stamped the bike into gear and it had just and it just it had snapped the snapped chain. It. I turned around and thought it was my fault and booted the compressor and ended up going home on crutches from TT. <laughs> 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 broke my foot. But yeah, so the that scene was the uh, swing arm, but we all yeah, like you say, we all were there. We were always there. You yeah, know, it yeah. wasn't he wasn't there just when the cameras were there. He was there working, like mm. you know. And we had his um, place where we used to go work on the bikes and stuff. And it wasn't for sure. We were just so we could get on with working the bikes. And um, yeah, a good good little team that Cammy <laughs> and Johnny and, and Guy. Was that the first time you'd worked with Cammy then? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd, um, I'd seen him around the paddock because obviously he's like been there for years and really yeah. successful. Still there now. Yeah, still there yeah. now. Um, and. Yeah, worked with him and it just like how it all came together. We just there were no trying or anything. It was just all yeah, work. Everyone just yeah. gelled. They're like if said we were going to work at six in the morning, everyone like, yep, no worries. See, yeah. see, there were no like oh god, do I have to get yeah, yeah. do the job, you know? And Cam was just great to work with. Johnny just like one of them like a like an energizer bunny. Just kept going. Yeah. Just at his own pace. Just like steady, steady worked. Left him to his job and you know the girls. Um, Guy's girlfriend and Johnny's girlfriend had met Brews and yeah it was such a good and they were Sean the Sheep who had the motor on it was yeah real real good times real good times yeah before it all got too uh, too much of the public and the focus on yeah Guy and yeah rather than rather than the racing and uh, you know he still went he still went quick he, he surprised me at um, was it 2014 when I think it, I think he went alright then at the TT on the BMW, on right, the Tyco yeah. BMW, and I thought, well, I didn't, you know, I thought he's going to go for it type thing. And he, and he went and had a good yeah. do it, and I thought, bloody hell, fair play, you know, yeah. after he'd had a waste of time on that Honda bike and you know and stuff like that. So, yeah, oh, was that after? I can't remember. Just I was quite. It was a waste of time, whatever he did on it, wasn't it? I was quite surprised when he did when he was on the Honda. Yeah. The year McGuinness broke his leg. Yes. And they grabbed him in the pits. And he was about to just ride off, and he was on a Triumph Tiger, and I was a bit like surprised Honda allowed that. <laughs> yeah, it's very. Yeah, uh, I think I think everyone, his own thing. Yeah, I think I think everyone in the paddock knew that was. Mm. They just thought, what what is that all about? You know, yeah. the Honda was a nightmare at the time, wasn't it? And yeah. you know, John had had his issues with it and stuff like that. And um, for Guy to come sort of come back to the sport to do it, nah, yeah, he yeah. wasn't gonna. You, well, all the components weren't there yeah, for it from to the work. outside looking you thought this isn't going to work and, yeah. and unfortunately but we got proved right I believe he did it because he was offered a chance to ride the Honda Sage, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. to be honest yeah. I'd, if I was in his position I'd do yeah. the same thing because that but, bike for me that's the the bucket list bike is to ride a Honda Sage. I think you wouldn't have if you'd have um, worked it down at Loud like when Tucks used to have a, like some guests there or something and yeah. he'd come out and start it up and he didn't work so I'd be like bloody hell it really was so yeah he'd, he'd do it in the part where you, the Arctics used to come inside so you could unload and the Arctics were always inside at Honda when I said I was going to work down there in the start of 2005 everyone was like oh Tucks with this Tucks with that and I'm like look take it if, you know if he's right with me and I remember going down and he uh, he met me and my girlfriend at the time and took us to the house where he was going to put us up in and took right. us out for a meal and you know everything that year he was absolutely mint yeah, I, I had a big sound. bust up with um, one of the one of the uh, guys there and like he sorted it all out it was you know absolutely mint <laughs> yeah I was yeah I'm not a bad word to say about him to be fair can't be many teams who would find you a place to stay and set you up like that no. to be a part of the team no it was uh yeah, it was. I mean, it was a big thing for me. It was, it was too much for me, really. I'd always lived in, in Silsden and never yeah. sort of been big out. Change, you know? yeah, it yeah. was like I'd lived at home, and it was like right, you're moving out and you're moving to Louth, which yeah. is, uh, you know, a, a strange place to say the least. <laughs> and um, you know, living with, I, well, I knew Phil Marin at the time. Me and Phil lived together down there. Mm. Um, so yeah, but you still, yeah, it's just a. A big, too, too big a step, really. Have you done much racing yourself? No, um, I was going to race with my brother, um, but uh, the I'd actually got going all right. My brother had raced, he'd won uh, Derby Phoenix Championship and he'd retired. 
uh, and I'd bought a bike and I was doing a bit of testing and stuff and getting going all right and we said right we'll do it we'll have a like brotherly team yeah so we're all cool and I went on my mate's stag do in Newcastle and Math said um oh, I'm going to do this race at Mallory Park and you know like just to get back up to speed and that yeah. and uh yeah unfortunately he did because it were a wild card to start from back at Gridley were fifth by three quarters of the way around Mallory Park and knowing Matthew would have wanted to be leading after yeah, lap yeah. one and he eye sided and unfortunately someone's hit him and you know he got killed and so it was a kind of I couldn't put my mum and dad through that yeah. you know they were there at the time and I said I won't ever race but my dad said look we got to do track days and my mum would you know we had to speak to my mum um, you know my sister Rebecca um, you know we do track days that's cool um, but then it's a whole different type of you haven't got that people trying to prove anything and, no. well you do I suppose yeah, a little bit yeah, you but you're not in a bunch bed, group are you no. in the same way as you would no. with a race and you, you know especially after that had happened that you know you kind of took your time yeah. and you know we, we went out to Spain actually me and my dad with my brother's bike and which is just in here actually but um, you know did the track days and, and sort of then just parked it really but like didn't do anything for a while and when we did this job luckily with RST uh, knowing Stu um, and that we got to do some parade laps at the TT yeah. at, and at the Classic. I've heard rumours about this. Oh, mate, the best times <laughs> ever. Got to go down to... Was Jerby. it a parade? Well, <laughs> I paraded out there. <laughs> um, How much were you and Stu parading? Oh. I mean, like, if I was there waiting to see these lovely bikes that you were riding coming yeah. past, how much would I have seen of them? Well, I mean, <laughs> to put it in perspective, we, it was a classic. It was the classic... <laughs> Yeah. And they went to be classic bikes going around. We were going around on brand new ZX tents and stuff. So, uh, yeah, there weren't much parading. And, yeah, we just, like, you know, it was minute. Like, just go. Yeah. Just have a, you know, have a blast round. And, yeah, we got tucked in. And, and don't get me wrong, we were probably looked. If you'd have got a racer out there, they thought, you know, these points are tootling round. But yeah. to us, it was like, wow, it was awesome. And we got to do the JB track day as well. So, like, on track we like Fogarty, yeah. Agostini, um, was um, Checker there one time, was it Checker? He was the guy that had a fight with um, Fogarty. Keeley. Keeley. Not Keeley, Keeley. Um, you know, uh, Freddie Spencer, there were some right riders oh, wow. there, like, wow, you know, to have a go at that. Yeah. But that's, again, that's going like back to the film thing. If I'm doing something, I'll throw myself into it and I'll, you know, RST and Motor Direct and, and Motor will, you know, have been so good to me personally and, and to riders that we've had on. Mm. I, I'll put a bit back in and help them out with, you know, if yeah, you need yeah, a yeah. bike for a show and stuff. And, you know, like we've, we had the bike over at My Moto and um, yeah. stuff like that. And that's the rewards you get. And people, oh, you jammy sword. And like, well, yeah, we've yeah, got to put the effort in. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, so, yeah, I did a few track days, a few parade laps. And then, uh, my mate had a supermotor and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll come and have a go at that. So I'm like, yeah, but it's a race. And I told my mum I wouldn't race. And <laughs> I went off and did this race and my dad turned up like, I thought, oh, my dad would be cool with this. I said, don't, you know, don't tell me. It was like, she's not thick, mate. She knows what you're doing. She knows what you're <laughs> so, doing. Yeah, she knows you're racing. You can't so. pull the wall over no, your own No, no, no. <laughs> my mum's like, you know, she might be a bit gullible with some stuff, but she knew, you know, yeah. she knew what was going on. Uh, so I did a bit of racing, going back long-winded around to, I did a bit of supermoto racing, and did all right out, to be fair, I had a yeah, few yeah. good runs at um, uh, Wigan. It's, it's almost, it's not the same as track racing. No, no, and there that's, is, that's I mean, the, the, the I speeds it. are going to be a bit slower. and Yeah, that's the way I sort of put it to my mum there, it isn't like track racing, yeah. but... That's yeah. its own dangers in other ways. Of course you, it does, yeah. You're doing... Jump, like, I think there's some jumps on some of them. Yeah, there is, yeah. Most of them, to be fair, and you're coming off tarmac on slicks, tarmac on slicks onto mud to do yeah. a jump, and I'd never rode motocross or anything like that, so, yeah. so like, all what scary. is going on here? Uh, but yeah, in the end, after about half a season of doing it, I were like, I think, I'm 34th in one of the British Championship races or something like that, and like, you know, for a lad who never really done it, and a bit of a big lad yeah. as well, I were, uh, yeah, we're well happy with that. Yeah. Uh, but then we did a bit of that. Um, what's it called? Free Tech. Yeah, the did Free one, Tech. Did one yeah, of the yeah. races at Mallory, which was a bit weird. I'd never been back to Mallory. 
uh, since Matthew were killed and raced around there, so it was quite a, a weird sort of scenario. But you know, yeah. once you once I got it out of me, and after a couple of laps, it was like right, come on, let's. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the the feeder class has got. I mean, that super twin job was meant to be a feeder class, wasn't it? And yeah. that now is probably worth more than our super stock bike is our super twin. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous how it goes. Yeah, it started off as a, a, a grassroots type. Yeah, like a cheap way of getting into road racing, and uh, it's just gone stupid. Who was it? Who who really started pushing that? Um, Farquhar. Farquhar. Yeah, because he, he was, he was doing headstock changes on ER sixes, was it? So he could put on. A ZX six R front end on a ER six right. frame, yeah, and then it was like you know you end up with especially like yours, yeah. It's probably got more Joe kind of handmade and development oh, so bespoke, yeah. than any of these, yeah, yeah. Joey. These you can buy stuff off shelf and yeah, and but you might have, might have to make an odd bracket for a you know potentiometer or something like that, or you you might have your own way of fixing stuff on and things. Yeah. But them things, everything on it's bespoke, bespoke, you know, bespoke. and the tanks all. Oh yeah, all all. My, we yeah. put a ZX10 front end in it, and it's got Dimag wheels and Brembo uh, hell calipers and Brembo discs, and you're like, bloody hell, where does it stop? Yeah. yeah, you know, and and I think that's the problem now with the patterns have come in, and mm-hmm. they're like, would you ever be tempted to go down the route of having a pattern? If if we could get the ones the uh, the top boys get. The but they're not the same for everyone. Is it not a level playing field? <laughs> no. The, we, we could get with the ones that don't get stripped at the TT. Then, uh, yeah. Because there was there was talk of a. Is there a was there a speed trap? Yeah. Was last like year, where there was like five. Hour, oh, how much? Seventy. Oh, it was something ridiculous. Yeah. Seventy mile an hour. Whatever it was, it, yeah. was, it was big. Maybe not seventeen. It could. I don't know. Five mile been. an hour would be a yeah. big difference. Um, if someone's pulling away from you at five mile an hour, yeah. Conky body. It'd yeah. Be. And um, you know. And the, and then they don't get stripped at end at race. It's like, yeah. come on, <laughs> yeah. It's sort of something takes, not quite right. Yeah, it's uh, it, you know, it's it's got in for the likes of, you know, not myself because I don't put the money into the bike, um, but you know, for the likes of Daffabet who were putting money yeah. into to the team and and Roy and Ben who were putting their own money into, especially the Super Twin, mm. um, you know, to you know, because the the money we get off Daffabet don't cover the whole thing, you know. Roy and Ben are still putting their own money into yeah. it, and you know, for the, for them who are proper working people, mm. to put a you know, I'm not crying the party, but they're they're putting their money into it, and then you kind of getting you, your hands tied behind your back. If it's not kind of controlled where the bikes are checked, then you do risk losing the bigger sponsors who are sponsoring the event, and then eventually you lose teams and you yeah. lose the event altogether. Yeah, of course you do, and and like, you know, for for. Like the super stock bikes and what have you, they can put on a dyno and, and it's got to be within this parameter or whatever, they can check that. But with the super twins, like with everything being so bespoke, mm. how, how can you not strip it yeah. to see what's in that to bike? see what's inside it, yeah. Like, you know, they can put it on a dyno and, and they could have just switched the electronics off, turned it back on and then it, it gives the reading yeah, that yeah. it needs to show. Mm. You know, that that's not difficult, but... You know, it not to get stripped and stuff was yeah. It it was it was a, a bit of a yeah. It's a it's a bit of a pill to swallow, whatever the, the saying is. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially with the the work that you know the team puts in and stuff like that. And and you like Safari, who you know that's their business. Mm. You know that's you know their their business doing super twins. Do you think you'll see a lot more Aprilias out next? Oh well, this year. Um, is that the ones have now? Yeah, or are the pattern still. I don't know. Um, I mean. Yeah, there were a few Aprilias there, weren't there, last year, but I think there's going to be a, quite a, a swamp of, of patterns. Yeah. Um, I think the owners or the people who built the the front-running patterns have changed hands, they've handed it over to right, okay. different uh, sources, so... Um, the, mo- the more available. I think, yeah, the, the I dare say the the ones that are at the front aren't available, but the... The other ones, the maybe are. there's more... As they sort of more and more come in, they'll, they'll, there's always yeah. going to be more in there. Um, as the years go by, but uh, yeah, I don't know with really. I have not, I've not really heard no. much, much people. I know Lee ran one, didn't he, last year? Um, but yeah, I don't know whether they really with. We, you know, we we speak to Kawasaki a lot, and like I said earlier, it'd be nice to you know if we could get someone like Dean on a on a on a you know on it again. You know, get a proper yeah. front runner to have a go. Gary Johnson would have done well last year, but he had a, I think he like hit the. Changes or whatever he did 
um, not his fault but, at all. Uh, yeah. But he was going well on it. He he was gutted. Um, he he'd have definitely been a podium on it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we stuck with it. We sold one of them, um, and we've still got one left. So, well, whoever goes in it will, you know, still put it out there to win. But yeah. It is a, it is it's a, a bit hard against them. You've patterns. got that kind of um, reputation with your super twin. Yeah. Making a race winner. Yeah, which, you know, it, we've. I remember the one Dean and myself built, it, and it was genuinely in his garage in Bradford, yeah. at his, at his mum and dad's house, uh, where he was living at the time. And, um, you know, he won on that. And honestly, mate, he, there was. We were using ducting out of like uh, shower shower trays and, and and stuff like that. The bodywork was made by one of his sponsors who made shower trays, and we were like, <laughs> if it had a bit of wall, it had taken the wall out, not the bike. It was that heavy. Yeah. For for Dean to ride that and do that, but then when Ivan came on board and and um, we had Adam from the Isle of Man who builds the twin, mm. um, you know, and he's he's like the you know the guru of of twins, along, twins. With, yeah, along yeah. with like Farquhar and stuff. Um, you know, that took it up a, a level, you know, for when Ivan had his two wins, did he have two? Two wins, I think he had. Three? Both on the Super Twin. Yeah. Two wins, I think it was. Um, you know, that that became sort of the the target and pattern with Michael Dunlop and now Wiki on it are uh, you know, they're the they're the target now, aren't they? But yeah. Whether you you know, you can't take away that they are two of of the best riders out there, but what yeah, when you, when, you, when you're giving that away in, and you look at the percentages of the speed to what the top speed of a super twin is, yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's a bit of... For, what was your first bike? My first bike was a, an Italjet 50. Was it? Yeah. A little, um, a little sort of, the, like a little more Tubular frame... Bike. Single sided front swing arm, that one? No, no, like the little oh, kids right, bike. Okay, yeah. yeah, the very first, that was my very first Not bike. the dragsters then? No, 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 the uh, the little Italjet. My brother had a T Way, and my dad had like a, what do they call them? Bantam, wasn't it, or something? BSA Bantam? Yeah, I think it was something like that. That was that. my first bike. And did you have a, a Beamish as well, or something? A bit there was Suzuki, a Beamish. Suzuki yeah. Beam? Oh, wait, oh, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not like up on stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so we used to go to flap it. Yeah, poor mum and sister used to have to come with picnic and sit up there while we trialled about, you know, just messing about up there, a bit of dirt biking <laughs> and stuff. And then, um, yeah, then I wasn't really into it until I started at Colin Appy Yards and I needed to get to work in Keithley. Yeah. Um, so, like, we've never we've never had hope given to us, me and our lad. We had to, you know, work for it. We, you know, we weren't, mum and dad looked after us, but, you know. Yeah. But you had to earn it. You had to put your own sort of money to it. And, um, you know, all I could afford were like this X150 Suzuki, uh, which were like, all my mates had these fancy scooters and that. But my dad was clever, you know, he, he, he learned to respect stuff. And, um, yeah, I got this X150. So it was an old style bike, but like 10 times faster than all their scooters. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. used to bomb, but yeah, I used to seize it all the time. My dad used to give me some right rollickings for it. <laughs> like, you're aiming it too hard. Anyway, we'd send it off to Grampian, get it back, had cover, like, you were like, run it in properly. And I would run it in that slow, like push bikes had come past me. That's how I was <laughs> like, I'm not getting told off by my dad again. And uh, anyway, ended up that Grampian were boring it to tight. So it wasn't even my fault, so anyway, X-150 and Mint. Stop seizing it. <laughs> it. Oh, stop seizing it. And then, never really, um, I got my car, and I was more into my cars and stuff mm. like that, so I never really bothered about a bike until um, until I wanted to start doing a bit of riding and bought a Honda CBR 600 RR, the 2003 model. Bit of a jump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And that was my first ever time on a proper bike, really, yeah. around Mallory Park. On you remember when you used to do it Wednesday afternoons, but right. ACU yeah. whatever license holders or something. And um, yeah, went and did did that, and sort of got the bug for riding bigger bikes then. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a lot of bikes. Yeah, I've never really. I've been quite sort of lucky that to be able to ride what, different bikes. What you've worked on, yeah. Stuff. yeah. Um, like when we were at Tyco went on Suzuki days and you got to have a bit of a rip round with them and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, 
Yeah, I never. Yeah, it sounds a bit boring, that, doesn't it? I haven't had a lot of bikes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a scooter, um, and I've got my brother's bike still, but uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm more into my car. Well, not even really into my cars, just just work, just work like working on the race bikes. Yeah, yeah, it just provided me with good, you know, good. Uh, race season job. doesn't allow for much time outside of. No. If you're not, I mean, especially with what you're doing, you're at the race meeting with the bike, and then when everyone else is chilling out between you're doing this yeah, to get yeah. it ready for the next meeting. Yeah, and there's, there's only like me that works for the team, so um, yeah, there's a, there's a bit to do, but um, yeah, spe- going like back to how much it did take time off when I started on my own, mm. and you were trying to get as much day, day rates as you could, so you're doing BSB roads, yeah. everything you could, you, you know, week, summers had just gone, yeah. you, you know, the amount of weddings and birthdays and stuff and holidays that I've missed because of it, yeah. And it's given me a great life, don't get me wrong. It's it's mint, I won't change it, but uh, yeah, it's it's not as just as... I always found it's... Think. Running up to the first round of the BSB was always like, you're pushing to get everything ready yeah, for the first yeah. round of the BSB. And there'd only be like two rounds, is it? And then it's TT. Yeah. Oh, no, then it's um, North Northwest. West. Yeah. Then it's TT. And then you... So you might say to people, oh, I'll be all right, I'll get it done after the TT. But then you go, TT, it's summer. Yeah. Summer, you're back into like September, running up. And just when you think you've done the Macau <laughs> Everyone's stuff, a special lands or from Macau, yeah. any C-bike show, they, someone wanted someone doing for that. And it's yeah. Just, yeah and, it, and then Macau's done and Helmet's already landing them for the next. Yeah. Go for it with what I was doing anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. As soon as you get back from Macau, it's starting to... And guess know, when prepare. a new model comes out, there's a lot more jam between that end of season one year and yeah, prepping it's like for the next. rushing to get the parts that everybody wants. Who's yeah. gone on the you know the next model? Luckily, we've sort of always been um, Kawasaki and uh, here, so we haven't sort of been like the sheep that you know some people are and yeah. go to where they jump to where they think that's the bike to to have when you know it's it's down to the rider mostly and stuff. So mm. um, yeah, you. We've sort of as sort of evolve each time, so it's not uh, it's it's quite a good way of doing it, and we'll try and use as much as we can from one bike yeah. to the next for for a costing as well, really. But yeah, yeah also for a, for a work thing to get it to get it ready. I mean, you look at the manufacturers and it, a lot of the changes they make, even when they bring out a new model, is actually a lot of the old bike is still in that DNA oh, yeah. and and brackets and parts, components can cross yeah, over. Yeah, I don't think it's like it used to be where when they brought, uh, you know, like when the F Sport Honda CBR came out, uh, was out and then it turned to the RR and it yeah. was like a whole new bike. A whole new yeah. bike. It was like a new manufacturer had made yeah. it, wasn't it? Uh, but now it's just facelifts and illusions yeah. and... You look at the yeah. Fireblade and the ZX10s. Yeah. The, it's lots of little refinements constantly. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... Um, uh, and we like to, you know, sort of keep everything uniform between it, you know, footrests and mm. handlebars and everything across all, all the bikes and stuff like that to keep the cost down and, and what have you. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice way to do it, really, keeping with the same manufacturer and Kawasaki, you know, gives a bit of help and, and stuff, so it's good. I need a juicy story. Give me a juicy story. <laughs> yeah, no, when you said that, you think of all these things when you chat. There's loads when, of th- when loads you things chatting. I could talk about, but I can't talk about no, them. No, you, I mean? you like... I can't drag someone else's name in. No. But no, it's, uh, there's like so much stuff things. that goes on that everyone knows about, no one talks about. Yeah, yeah, it's um, like when people go to Macau and stuff like that, and it's... Oh, there's plenty of stories from Macau. Yeah, but <laughs> there, there is, but like... Nothing as major as sort of people would think, you know, and it's, it's, yeah. um, I, I, I dare say it's tamed down a lot now from what it, has apparently it? what you think, like what you hear stories of what it used to be like, but like we had a good, uh, we had a couple of good nights out in Scarborough when we've been like there early to set up because we used to take the big truck up and yeah, Roy and, uh, Roy ended up in a bit of a state once and <laughs> like he didn't see, we didn't see Roy for two days, we just didn't truck <laughs> it like, oh, that's nice, and Roy, Roy can drink too fair, he's a big old boy. Uh, but yeah, I've had some good times. Macau's good. Macau's good crap for it. Yeah. You know, end of season, you've, you know, you've got the race out of the way, mm. and like, uh, John comes over from Daffabet. It's the only race they come to, is is Macau it's because Macau. they're based in Manila, um, and he comes over, you know, and comes watching. They says, right, I'm here just to have the crap with you boys, and it's yeah, yeah. He 
They don't even come over for the TT then? No, we, they, have, they have a p few people in the Isle of Man um, that are sort of connected to Daffabet who yeah. come up. Um, you know, they come for a brew and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the actual only race, because he, they're based out in Manila, it's like an hour, is it an hour flight or something to right. Macau? So they come over for that, and that's the only race they come to. They come to. Uh, but they love it. That he's, uh, yeah, he comes in as a John's M E E camp party, next <laughs> level partying. We've been, I've been to a few Celtic games with him, and yeah, yeah, we've had some good parties after that. <laughs> right. So, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, I don't know what else. Make sure you follow. RC Express, Daffabet Racing for the 2023 season. See who the new rider's going to be. Yeah, that should be announced. Follow you right through the TT week, and all the roads. Yeah, we've got a few BSBs uh, to do. Um, TT, Southern 100. Uh, I don't know if Ulster Grand Prix is back on, is it? I'm yeah. not sure, possibly. And then, yeah, and out to sort of all going towards Macau and hopefully a couple of... Uh, might get you on the designing things for a couple of special bikes. That'd be cool. Have a look at the new. Uh, and you'll be at the circuit Celtic signing, <laughs> signing <laughs> profile pictures. <laughs> I won't waste. I won't, I won't waste people's ink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, mate. I think Top I'll job. do. I'll tell you what. You better get some. <laughs> you better get some out of that, won't you? <laughs>